Uh, welcome back, guys. We're on the 8-6, factoring the trinomial of the form 8x squared plus bx plus c. Remember, this is the one where it's not a simple trinomial. The a coefficient is something that's not 1, so it could be any number. So uh, let's take a look. We've already done 1, 2, and 3. We're on question number 4. Let's give it a, give it a look. We're going to start with our x method. We're going to put our dot, our addition sign. So we're looking for 3 times 4, but it's going to be a negative, negative 12, and then negative 11. So I'm looking for two numbers that combine to give me negative 12, but subtract to give me negative 11. Two numbers that multiply to give me negative 12, but subtract to give me negative 11. Well, first of all, let's list our factors of 12. Just three sets of factors. Which one, which one of those do you see would multiply to give you 12? Well, all of them. Which one would give you some combination of 11? Subtracting right here. It would be these two. So this is going to be 12 and 1. But 12 times 1 don't multiply to give me a negative 12. They would multiply to give me a positive 12. So one of these guys got to be negative. It's going to be the negative 12, and here's why. Negative 12 times 1 is negative 12. That makes sense. Negative 12 added to positive 1 gives me the negative 11. So my two factors are negative 12 and 1. And remember, we're splitting this middle term. The first term stays the same, the second term stays the same, and we're grabbing this middle guy and splitting it. So here we go. So we have 3x squared, negative 4 at the end, we have negative 12x and positive 1x. Beautiful. So now we have our four-term polynomial. We already, we already know how to factor a four-term polynomial. We're using that Punnett square. So let's go for it. So our first term is 3x squared. It goes in the first box. Second term is negative 12x. The sign's important, so make sure you include it. Positive 1x, and then negative 4. We're going to find the GCF of each row and each column. So here we go. That's going to be 3x. That's going to be a positive 1. Nothing else is uncommon there. And um, let's check here. We have just an x in common, it looks like. And it has to be a negative 4, because the first term out of the 2 is negative. Negative is part of the GCF, and it's going to be a negative 4. So our final answer is this guy, x minus 4, this beautiful binomial, times this beautiful binomial. And again, you can write your binomials in whatever order you'd like. If this is your preference, I say go for it. So that's the answer, or that is the answer. And if you're not sure, you're like, I don't know if I got the signs right, multiply it out. Check your answer. Check it out. Let's look at question number five. Same thing. We're going to start with our x method. We're going to take that front coefficient, multiply it by the constant in the back to get negative 20. So we're thinking of factors of 20, specifically negative 20, that combine to give me negative 19. Hmm. What are factors of negative 20 that combine to give us negative 19? Well, it would have to be negative 20 and positive 1. And if you don't believe me, let's check it. Negative 20 times positive 1. Does that give me negative 20? Well, it sure does. Negative 20 added to a positive 1. So it's negative 20 go forward 1 on the number line. Are we at negative 19? Definitely. So we took this middle term and we split it into this. Now let's rewrite. Remember, our front term never changes. Our back term never changes. It's our middle term that splits. And in this case, we have a negative 20 and a positive 1x. Cool. Now look, again, front term didn't change. Back term didn't change. Middle does equate to that. 
So we know we really haven't changed anything. We just written it differently. Now we're going to go to our Punnett square. Here's our four terms. We have four boxes. Quite convenient. Now we're going to write them in. Wonderful. Now you're going to find the GCF of each column and row. So here we go. That's one. That's going to be positive one to be exact. That's going to be a 5x. This is going to be just an x. And because this next one starts with a negative, we have to ensure that we also have a negative in our final answer. So 5x plus 1 and x minus 4, or x minus 4 and 5x plus 1. Either one of those is your answer. It's up to you which one you'd like to go with. Okay, I'm going to stop the video here. Please do 6, 7, and 8 if you haven't already done so. Good luck. Last video coming up. Bye.